Assalamu alaikum. A few short years ago, if you asked me about people like Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, and even Leonardo DiCaprio, I would have said they're successful. They're high value men. They've got the money, they've got the lifestyle, and they've just reached success in their area. Now, a few weeks ago, I came across this guy called Chris who has a channel called First Man. And in this video, he was saying that Bill Gates is not a high value man at all. In this video, I'm going to talk about why Chris is wrong and why I was wrong as well. So in Chris's video, what did he actually say about Bill Gates? Why is he not a high value man? Why is he not a real man, a successful man? Well, he has his straight seven system, which is basically his five criteria for what makes you a high value man or a good man or a successful man. And these criteria kind of made me cringe, laugh, and made me ask, was he serious? So what are these five criteria that he has for judging if you, if me, if him, if Bill Gates are real men, successful men, high value men? Well, it's body, looks, wealth, assets, and personality. Now, I don't know about you, but some of those are really just, wow. Is this a joke? So first, body. I mean, what do you mean by body? That's just a weird thing for, for guys I feel to go around saying like, yeah, his body, he's got a seven out of 10 body, 10 out of 10 body, <laughs> what is that? If he means health, if he means exercise, like that's one thing, but body is just a bit strange. Then looks like looks, body, I don't really know what the difference is. Looks seems to be like something that, okay, you look a certain way, like you look good, you're good looking, you're not good looking. It's just kind of the way you are. Obviously health can help that, but again, it's a bit of a strange one. And body and looks seem to be, according to him, the way he's talking, seem to be things that only young people can get. So again, how can we say that only young people can be high value men? Then we've got wealth. Now wealth, I do understand where he's coming from when he puts wealth in here, in terms of judging if you're successful, if you're a high value or not, but it, as Muslims, I feel like we would more turn towards the way the wealth is used. So if the wealth is coming from haram, used for haram, then we're not interested in that. If it's used to just fuel your lifestyle in fun, then again, we're not really impressed by that. What we're impressed by is yes, making wealth, that's impressive, but the way you spend it is very important as well. And not just giving it in charity, but spending it on useful things for the world, for the community, for your family, for the sake of Allah. And then assets. When it comes to assets, he's not just talking about I own houses, I own real estate, stocks, bonds. He's talking about lifestyle, like how you use your wealth to actually have a nice life setup. And the example he was giving was to be able to have, instead of this big mansion that you don't use, to have a nice penthouse where you can have parties and this and that. Again, so his definition, I mean, it's cool. Yes, it's good to have a convenient lifestyle, but only if that is to have a life that makes it more convenient for you to do important, useful things. Of course, some level of enjoyment is no problem at all, but his insistence on the pleasure and the, the desires element of it, I felt was a bit too much. Then finally, personality. How do you define personality? He was giving Bill Gates this out of 10 for personality, what does that even mean? From what I understood, he means charisma, he means sense of humor or something like that. And as Muslims, yeah, that's cool. Maybe that would make you successful, but it's not the most important thing. So the idea behind the straight seven system is if you had an average of seven out of 10 on these five criteria, then you'd be good. You'd be a high value man. You'd be getting up there in terms of success. So let's look at what he actually gave Bill Gates in terms of his scores. So first for body, he gave him a one out of 10. Again, very weird thing to be talking about other man's bodies, but he gave him one out of 10 because because the you know Bill Gates 60s 70s or something and he's quite old but I don't know why you would assume he's like got a bad body. I don't know. That's just weird. Let's just leave that aside. Then wealth, he gave him a 10 out of 10 because he is one of the richest people in the world. He was the number one richest person in the world at the time. And so he gave him very high wealth. Then we go on to assets. So he gave him a six out of 10 in assets. And he said that's because he's got a load of money, but he doesn't really use it to do cool stuff. That's exactly what he said. Cool stuff, which whatever, that's just judging based on what you think is a useful way to spend money. Bill Gates, I'm not saying he's the best guy. He's the worst guy. He spends money the way he sees fit. I know he buys a lot of farmland, he invests in different things, he's into this whole climate change thing. So he spends it the way he sees fit, right? He doesn't have to like throw parties and spend it that way. He doesn't have to have penthouse like you're saying. So assets, it's just subjective depending on what you see fit. Then for looks, he's given him a one out of 10. Again, judging another man's looks, is just a bit weird. And I would say that his status, how val much value he brings to the world is not really to do with looks. So I wouldn't even put this really as a criteria. There are many high value, highly successful men who don't have the looks and, and so be it. Then for personality, he's given him a two out of 10. I mean, again, it's just weird. Like you're talking about his personality, you don't really know him. And he said that he was kind of a boring guy, but that's to you, right? He seems like a geeky guy. So other geeks might be really fascinated by him. But again, it's a strange criteria in the first place. And that's why his judgments and the scores he's giving are kind of weird. So to be clear here, I don't know Bill Gates. I'm not saying he's high value, he's low value. I'm just saying the criteria are weird and the criteria are way too based on someone being young. If they're young, he might give them a much higher score for body and for looks. And then when it comes to wealth, okay, they might be lower down 
around their assets because they're young and they like to do stuff that he likes to do he might give a score just like that so it's not very good criteria let's go on to what he said about Leonardo DiCaprio versus Jeff Bezos. So his whole point in this part of the video is that money isn't everything. Money doesn't ultimately only make you a high value man or successful. And he was saying Leonardo DiCaprio, he's much less wealthy than Jeff Bezos, but he's got other things going for him. And that's what makes him higher value than Jeff Bezos. So for example, with body, he's given them similar body, whatever that means. To me, Jeff Bezos, he seems like a guy who does seem to exercise, right? It seems okay, especially for his age. I haven't been looking at him too tough, to be honest. Then wealth, obviously Jeff Bezos, is a little bit higher than Leonardo DiCaprio because Leonardo DiCaprio, he's worth several hundred million dollars. Jeff Bezos is obviously worth billions and billions of dollars. So that's what would take him just a bit higher because once you get up there, it doesn't make too much of a difference between a few hundred million and a few billion. With assets, he's given them both like 10 out of 10. So be it okay. He thinks he his judgment is their lifestyle is good, whatever. When it comes to looks, he's given Leonardo DiCaprio way higher looks. And again, it's kind of subjective and it's not important as a man who's trying to bring value to the world, protect his family, protect his people, provide for his family provide for his people how much is looks playing into that i don't know but he really highly rates this whole looks and body thing but the funny thing is he's saying that leonardo dicaprio he's given him a blue color in this bar graph here because he's got blue eyes and apparently that's attractive again very very subjective strange way of judging then when it comes to personality he's given leonardo dicaprio 10 out of 10 Again, you don't even know the guy. Are you saying that because he seems charismatic in his movies? He seems funny in his movies? He's a good actor? Like, okay, that's cool. But there are so many ways or reasons that someone's personality might be good or bad. And it might not even just be good or bad. It might be just your taste is different to others. So Chris here, he's got a bit of a strange criteria for what makes someone high value or not. And his whole straight seven system, I wouldn't really agree with it. But that's easy to say. Like, I don't agree with that. What do I actually agree with? What would I say the criteria could be? I think it's okay to judge something out of 10, especially if we're looking at ourselves, we're judging ourselves out of 10. To go around looking at other people and judging them out of 10, that's a bit strange, that's not needed. But to judge out of 10, that's cool, I'm, I'm okay with that. In terms of the actual criteria for what makes you successful or high value as a man, I would have something like this. My number one criteria would be Iman how much your belief in Allah is manifest in your actions and in your general behaviors. And we could call this like actions of the heart because we can't judge Iman, but we can judge the actions of the heart. Stuff like tawakkul, trusting on Allah, stuff like being steadfast in the face of adversity, difficulty, and against temptation. So number one would be Iman. Number two would be ibadah, worship. Like where is your worship on a scale of zero to 10? Are you praying? Are you praying extra? Are you fasting extra? Are you fasting Ramadan? Have you been to Hajj? All of these things, do you pray the night prayer? All of these could come and make your score out of 10 for a better. A real man, he can't be a real, real man unless he is praying, he's got that Iman, and wherever he is, that's where we would put the score. As the Prophet he said about Abdullah, what a great man, if only he prayed the night prayer. So if he prayed the night prayer, he would have been more of a man, a better man. Then I would put family or service to family. The Prophet as we know, he said, the best of you is he who is best to his wife or to his wives or to his family, different narration. So the way we are with our family and how much we provide and protect our family is a big judgment of how good we are as men, how successful we are as men. Allah says, protect yourselves and your families from the hellfire. How do we do that? We need to provide. We need to provide education, support, teaching, knowledge, money, all of that. And we need to protect. We need to protect them from the temptations that are out there, the propaganda that's out there, the world agenda that's out there. Next, I would move on to beyond the family. I would move on to ummah, service to the ummah. How much value do you bring to the ummah? How much do you help the Muslim ummah? And this is one way you would say, okay, how much charity do I do? How much volunteering do I do? How much do I help people with my knowledge? How much do I contribute? All of this would be a score. And many of us, I would imagine, would get one or zero or two or three on this. And then maybe one of the biggest ones, especially for Muslim men, is discipline. What I found in my research is that the biggest trait of a strong, good, high value Muslim man is to be disciplined. It comes in the form of the Prophet ﷺ saying, the one who is strong is not the one who can wrestle. It's the one who can hold and control his anger when he feels it boiling up inside him. Discipline is when the Prophet Yusuf ﷺ, he was tempted by a woman and he was able to turn away and say no. So if I was to answer the question, is Bill Gates a high value man? It would be difficult for me to give a full answer, but definitely without Iman, without Ibadah, how much of a score can he really get? So that was my take on Chris's straight seven system, the flaws I think it has and how I would make it better. And of course, how we have to view these things through the lens of a Muslim. If you want more videos like this for Muslim men, then just check out the playlist here. It will give you all my videos on Muslim men, masculinity and all of that. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.